So Hamas has just released a new video that purportedly shows the dead bodies of two Israeli captives. The video shows a third captive who says the two were killed by Israeli military strikes on Gaza. She continues to plead for the war to end. Now, we're following this breaking story from Tel Aviv and from Gaza. In a moment, we'll go to Hani Mahmoud. First, though, let's go to Sarah Hayrat in Tel Aviv. Tell us what we need to know about this video, Sarah. And just a word, we, we're choosing not to show it. These are people who are captive and who are speaking under duress. But tell us what we need to know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is the second part of two videos. One was released overnight, uh, and then they released the second one uh, just in the last uh, few minutes. Now, uh, to give you an idea of who these are, the, they are three uh, young uh, individuals. One of them is a female, uh, two of them male. Yesterday, in the first part of the video, you saw the video of all three of them talking to the camera. It wasn't uh, clear when it was filmed, uh, sending a message directly uh, to the Israeli government and the prime minister himself, Benjamin uh, Netanyahu, saying you need to return us home as soon as possible uh, and blaming them uh, for the situation there in terms of uh, airstrikes and saying that they will possibly die. Then the second part today, uh, you hear from the female uh, who says uh, that they had been hit several times by airstrikes, that they had actually been buried when the building they were held in uh, was hit, uh, and then uh, says that Al Qassam Brigade managed to uh, take them out of the rubble, and it was when they were relocating. Uh, one of the males was killed, and uh, second, and also the third one. Um, say, and then at the end of the video, you see that they are uh, dead. So uh, it's going to be incredibly hard for the families mm. to see this. And if anything, uh, let's remind you that yesterday was a hundred days. The kind of language that was used at that rally uh, was very different to what we've been hearing. We heard not just from the family of those captives, but also from uh, those that have been involved with helping them and supporting them. Now, uh, we know that some of the families of those captives were visiting Qatar uh, about last week, and they mentioned this yesterday, saying that they had spoken to the Qataris uh, to ensure that more was being done, and almost really reading between the lines, uh, saying that it's because of us taking matters into our own hands we managed to secure this deal where medicine should be delivered through the Red Cross. This has been agreed on. It hasn't happened. But this is only going to up the pressure on the government and certainly very painful for the families to see this video. Absolutely. And this, I assume, will further reveal what is right now a fault line uh, among the Israeli decision makers within the war cabinet on what Israel should do now and what is the best way to secure the release of the hostages. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, from hearing what uh, the Prime Minister just said yesterday, he said that the war must go on. They've actually upped the budget. They've amended this year's budget uh, because of the rising costs of this war. And he said that it's this that's going to help lead to the victory. Um, Interestingly, yesterday, one of the family members was on stage speaking, saying, uh, how long do you want us to wait? Do you want us to wait 100 more days? He, and many of them actually said, uh, you said you would secure this country. You said that you would have got rid of Hamas by now, and you haven't. They said, we are still facing security threats in those southern towns and in the northern borders. And they said, and still, uh, more than half of those captives are still being held in Gaza, while the government and the military we keep saying that it's only full force, i.e. the war, that will bring them back. But what we're seeing is very different. Really, the way they came back was through a ceasefire deal, and that's when more than half of them were returned. Uh, so speaking to some of those in the square, we asked them, we said, do you want a ceasefire? They said, we want an end to the war if this means bringing them all back. They said this has taken far too long. They actually really thought that this would have been under control, and it, it's become a lot more complicated and certainly no movement on another ceasefire. And in terms of the government, well, they are still going ahead with this war, and they've said that it will continue for the rest of the year, Cyril. Sarah Hyrat reporting from Tel Aviv. Thank you very much, Sarah. I want to bring in uh, Hani Mahmoud. You're joining us from Rafa in southern Gaza, Hani. So with this video release, we're seeing Hamas use what is possibly its most effective tool to put pressure on Israel, Hani.
Yes, it, it, that, that is correct. And it, it, it looks like uh, Hamas is very, very careful and, and, and always uh, uh, when it directs messages uh, to, to the world, but a more seemingly calculated uh, messages when they are directed to uh, the Israeli government or the Israeli military. We've seen that in the past and from the first uh, videos of, of hostages that the, before uh, a ceasefire was reached. Uh, but this time, uh, I, the, uh, what, what looks like Hamas is putting a pressure uh, in order to what it looks like an influence on the private and the public discussion uh, over the release of the hostages and over pushing Israel into the negotiation table or uh, come to uh, a ceasefire deal. The, the not so subtle message, uh, uh, though, in he, here is the, the appears to be that uh, if you do not come to negotiation, if you do not get to uh, a ceasefire deal and then into this aggression on Gaza and into the mass killing of Palestinians, you will also be killing the hostages. And I think that's the, the punchline uh, that is directed to the Israeli public. And it just, it goes, it happens to be a, a, a statement made by uh, the uh, the Israeli defense minister right after the the video was released and the catalog of a few of the points the primary among them the fact that the the military operations in the northern part of Gaza has come to an end and soon enough will be completed in in the southern part and there seems to be a link between the pressure that has already been uh, uh, put uh, uh, on the Israeli public just to push the negotiations further into reaching uh, a, a, a deal, a ceasefire deal. And we just heard a, 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 a report coming from Egypt that it was uh, given a green light by the Israeli a, a government uh, to go forward uh, with the uh, with pushing and uh, getting a deal of, of, of mm. releasing hostages. So it, it looks like we're, we're coming into that direction and the Hamas it played the cards very well. Hani Mahmoud reporting from Rafa in the southern part of Gaza. Thank you very much. Gideon Levy is a columnist with the Israeli Daily Haaretz. You're uh, live with us from Tel Aviv. Gideon, I wanted to start by getting your thoughts on this latest hostage video that Hamas has released. Well, sir, it wasn't released yet in Israel. It wasn't published even. And, uh, and it's quite uh, shocking because, you know, I understand the psychological warfare that uh, Hamas is uh, conducting, but uh, there should be some borders. And to play like this uh, yesterday, to release photos of them alive and today, the opposite. Uh, I think there should be some borders that Hamas, even Hamas, shouldn't cross. It doesn't serve anything. In any case, if you ask me what will be the reaction in Israel, it will be a reaction of, uh, again, look at those animals that we are dealing with, and we cannot trust them, and we should just uh, eliminate them and crush them. Nothing good will come out of it. If the effect is to cause um, shock or fear, sideration within the Israeli public. Uh, I mean, will they see this video and will it work? <clears throat> First of all, I don't think it, uh, the video will be screened. It will be published, but not screened because there is a tendency in Israeli media not to screen the full videos that Hamas uh, releases, including no, not the one from yesterday. They only publish the stills uh, photos, but not the, the videos. But this is not so important. Uh, there is a public pressure on the government to do anything possible to release the hostages. There was a big rally on a Saturday night, a very big rally of 24 hours, Sunday into Sunday. But by the end of the day, the very clear word, word of saying stop the war in order to release them is not the main voice that I hear from the protests. Mm. And if this is not the main voice that come out, comes out from the protest, so it's a little vague and it's, it's not very effective. Who doesn't want in Israel to see the hostages alive? No, no doubt about it. Who doesn't want them to be free at home? By the end, we, by the end of the day, we are dealing with babies and old people and, and women and, and, and even soldiers. But... 
I don't see this pressure getting to a very critical moment in which the government will have to leave everything and obey the protest. We are not there. Right. So that would explain why Benjamin Netanyahu has seemed largely impervious to these protests and to that pressure. It's because the center of gravity of opinion in the Israeli public is uh, in favor of continuing this war. Unfortunately so, yeah, absolutely. You defined it better than me. You don't need me. That's exactly the point. The gravity is still continuing the war, punishing Hamas. Obviously, again, I don't want to be misunderstood. Everyone wants to see the hostages get released. Sure. But not everyone is ready to pay the full price. Kitty and Levy, we really appreciate you joining us at such short notice this hour to discuss this. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.